verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, we're going to use a lot of scripture, so uh, let's, let's get into it. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now, now let's just get a footnote here. Ephesus is a church birthed by the Apostle Paul. Now, I love to study the early church. Um, the early church was tremendous, but it had a lot of persecution. Uh, the followers of Jesus were put into prison and even martyred. And so the church was not, uh, it, it was, if you truly made a conversion, then church was your life. You didn't care about what they did to you. It was your life. If you study, study the early martyrism. In fact, the church was birthed by the blood of the martyrs, going back, first of all, to Jesus Christ. And so think about it. Um, we think about a church in this country that, you know, um, if we can all just take a visit to Vietnam one day and go to an under church, underground church, you'll see the hunger that there is in the people of God in these communist countries, China especially, or even in the Middle East, I mean, where they're now beheading Christians now. In fact, they're really driving out a lot of Christians. We need to pray for those Christians in the Middle East. But, you know, I'm telling you, it has to be a, a, a serious dedication. You know, people say, well, it's hard being a Christian. i got an answer for that. It's not hard being a Christian because it takes one time it takes a one solid, dedicated decision to serve God. Once you make that one time, solid decision of God, you're, you're completely trusting God. You're going to do God's work. Amen. Hallelujah. The reason why it's hard is because I believe the playing field, uh, they love the both playing fields. They love the blessing of God, the promises of God, life eternal, but they also kind of love the things of the world, right? And so we have to understand that, uh, you know, we can't be in both fields at the same time. Either you serve one or another. Jesus said this, uh, the time is coming that either you will be hot or cold. Uh, forget about being lukewarm. Uh, he says, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You know, that is a strong declaration. He says, if you're lukewarm, you're spewed. Oh, man, I think about that. I think I'd rather be on fire. And if I want to be lukewarm, then I might as well just be, on, be frozen to the things of God, right? Or frozen from the things of God, right? But see, I know that if I'm hot in God, uh, then I, it, it's, it's a joy. This morning, I couldn't wait to get to church. I woke up. You know, we, when, when you understand the principle of worshiping God, Sunday now becomes a joy. Because I couldn't wait to get in the house of God with you guys. I couldn't wait to see my brothers and sisters together. Oh, I got family. I, I have family and a big family, and I miss them dearly. And then there are times that I'll go visit them, but there's nothing like the family of God. I get up I get up with a step in my, it, it, a spring in my step, and this morning I woke up past Christine. Of course, she kind of pushed me up. I said, honey, you promised, you, you told me to wake you up early. And so she got up, and when she got up, she had that big old smile. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody's smiling in the house about Jesus, even Louis smiling about about the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that's exciting. Hallelujah. And it doesn't happen by accident. It's purposeful. Purposeful. Telling your flesh, flesh today you're going to worship the Lord. You better get used to it because you get the rest of your life until Jesus comes to worship Jesus Christ. Amen. And so you have to purposely do that. Amen. Now notice what it says. He says here, and he said unto them, he said unto them, verse 3, unto what then were you baptized? Question mark. And they said unto John the Baptist. They were water baptized under John the Baptist. Then Paul, then said Paul, the apostle Paul, John, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. So remember the ministry of John the Baptist. His whole job was to draw the people to Jesus, warn them that Jesus is coming, be baptized, and you shall be saved. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, they were baptized into the water, right? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. So in other words, there were twelve men at this very moment. They got baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. So in other words, the question that I want to bring today, or the sermon that I want to bring to you today, is in highlight it is, um, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John the Baptist. 
And then said Paul, unto, uh, said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of water, saying unto them uh, that they should believe on him, they should come after him, that is, on Christ. So in other words, we have to believe Jesus Christ, number one. Believe Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But notice this. When you believed Jesus, did you stop there? That's the question I want to ask you. Did you stop? Um, if we stopped, we're missing the whole realm of the blessing that God has provided for the body of Christ. If we stop. There's too many people that receive Jesus Christ, and that's good. They're believers, but that's far, that's far they stop. Uh, they're not continuing growing in God. They're not even in the, in the filling of the Spirit of God. They're not moving into the knowledge of God. And let me just think, knowledge is important. Think about it. Knowledge is important. The world offers knowledge, and it's important. But there is a stronger, greater, more powerful knowledge, and it is in the Word of God. So in other words, you, you stop. No, we can't stop. We have to keep going, learning about the things of God, learning about the blessings of God, understanding more. See, heaven is opening to the body of Christ with more revelation. You have to learn more of the things of God. More of the things of God. The more that you build, and I like to say it this way, the more that you build your spiritual man, the more that you build your spiritual man, the greater the capacity is for you to learn the spiritual things of God. In other words, if, if I just says, well, I'm a believer in God, and, 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 but I don't go to church. I, 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 I believe in Jesus Christ, and I accept Him, but I don't need to go to church. I mean, you know, why do I need to go to church when, when, when I'm just a believer? You know, that's pe people think like that. And then some say, well, you know, I just don't really uh, think that uh, God is concerned about more revelation in us as long as we know that we're heaven bound. Well, let me tell you something. The less that you grow in God, the less you receive the promises of God. Amen. The more that you build your, your spiritual uh, uh, muscles and the more that you grow in God, the greater the capacity is for you to receive revelation. And so we find something in order to increase revelation. Think about this. In order to uh, increase revelation or the capacity of revelation, you must first increase spiritual capacity. In other words, build yourselves up spiritually. Pray more. Hear the word more. And, and, and you know, you may think that's, that's old-fashioned or it's an old record. But, but the reason why I say that is because when you're in the word, you have substance to combat those desires that are out there. You know, the, the, the flesh has so much desires. The enemy has so much desires. But the more that you build up yourself in the word, the more you have revelation of insight of what you're feeling at that very moment. Hallelujah. Amen. In other words, you're not quick to blow up your steam, if I may say it that way. You're not quick to lose your, your, your capability of who you are. You have revelation of who God is. And you have understanding, so you're walking in a greater knowledge of God. There's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And you find out, devil, you have bought this problem in my homestead. And now I have revelation that you are no longer needed here. You're out of work. Go in Jesus' name. Why? Because you got the word in you and you understood the greater revelation, right? Now notice this. Let's see something here. It says, when Paul laid his hands upon them. Do you see that in verse 6? And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake with tongues. In other words, it was the transferring of this anointing that Paul had onto these individuals. Let's talk about transference for a moment. Let's give you a definition of transference. And I want you to pay, uh, listen to this because you're going to get revelation of something that's been probably hindering you and you don't know how to get rid of it. And you've been praying about it and it seems like it's always there, always there, always there. Listen to this, transference. Transference in the, in, in the Webster Dictionary is the action of transferring something or the process of being transferred. Very simple, right? In other words, education involves the transferring of knowledge. I'm teaching you today, so I'm giving you a transferring of the knowledge of the Word of God. See, it's transference in you. It's transferring in you, right? But notice this. There are other ways to get this, this, this process of receiving something, and it's most likely the way you were raised, paternal. Maybe the way you were raised is the way you operate today and you're trying to break through and you can't break through because now you have a transferring of paternal issues. 
or maybe it's maternal issues. I know children that are still suffering because of, of the maternal issues, the paternal issues, you see. And it could be sibling issues. In other, in other words, maybe uh, a person was raised by a sibling and now they have a transferring of an attitude of the sibling. You see what I'm saying? I see this in people. I see this in my children. I can see my son uh, one way. I can see my daughter another way. I can see them in different ways. So in other words, they have their characters and if they're not under the word, their characters can direct their life or their characteristics can now form their children's habits. Are you saying, are you saying with me church? Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, we're no longer under that transference of the world or the school education or the education system of our parents our maternal or maternal or our siblings but now we have to realize we have the word of God that has to come change us from the inside out it's the word of God hallelujah amen and I love the word because it does change us and notice this there is a spiritual transference spiritual transfers let me give you an example good or bad spirits you can be around people that have bad attitudes, and it won't be long before you'll be suffering with that same attitude. What happened? How is that possible, Pastor? It's a transferring. It's a transferring of that spirit. Or you can be a happy person, and a person can come into the office, and the person's sad, and by the time you realize you're sad, because that person's sad. Have you ever noticed that it's always the worst case scenario uh, that always happens in, in an office? In other words, you're bubbly. The person next to you is not bubbly, and then you end up, he, that person ends up messing up your day. And, and you could have easily turned around and had them bubbly, but somehow the whole office is, is upset. You go home and say, honey, I don't know why, but it was a terrible day. I started my day off pretty good, and what do you think it was? It was a transfer of spirits. Amen. Can you say amen? So in other words, we, you know, you can be around people that are sickly, sickly. Now, now, this is powerful. I want you to think about it. You can be around people that are sickly, and all of a sudden you're sickly. You're having sniffles and you're having weaknesses and, 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 and you're wondering, where did this come from? I used to be healthy. All of a sudden, you know, uh, why is it my sick? See, see, it's a transferring of that spirit. Spiritual transference. You, you, can, you can be around people that are educated, 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 educated. And, and, and you, may not have been, you may not have been educated. You can be around people that are educated. All of a sudden, you're desiring to be educated. Isn't that amazing? You can be a dummy and get around somebody that's smart and also you want to be. Well, I want to read more. I'm going to read more. He, this guy reads books at work. And instead, of, I'm watching television. I'm watching my iPad and he's reading. So I'm going to read more. I'm going to read more. You find yourself going to the library and studying more and, and you feel good about yourself. What, what just happened? That person just activated you. It was a transfer. Now, the opposite is good. You could be, you could be hanging around lazy people. You could be one that's educated, like, like and reading books. You can hang around somebody that just watches television all day long, sports all day long. And by the time you know it, you're like, ah, oh, it's me. I'm watching sports all day long now. I don't want to read a book. I'm so bored. Well, what happened? You were not like that. A transfer of the spirits. You see, you see, church, we can go on and on and on, lying and crying. You know, you can go on and on. People could, you can be telling the truth all day long, hang around a liar. All of a sudden, you're lying. You're finding yourself, why am I lying? Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You know, you can be paying for lunch and going and being one that's so splurging and blessing God and blessing people. Say, let me buy your lunch. Let me buy your coffee. And you hang around somebody that's just a tight water. And all of a sudden, you become a tight water. And you don't, nah, I'm not going to spend any money. I know anybody. Wow. All of a sudden, you realize what's going on it's a transference of that attitude so it's possible as you have paternal maternal siblings you also have spiritual trans uh, transferences now let's talk about this spiritual transference think about it here we find and look at something I want you to see something it's quite interesting that this transferring was Paul laid his hands in verse 6 and listen to this in verse 8. After he laid hands on them, he went into the synagogues and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way, that way is the gospel, before the multitude he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of Tyrannus. 
Now, this is interesting. This got my attention. When the Holy Ghost was released, there was a burst of energy that they went out to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you see the devil now coming all of a sudden now? All of a sudden you have this, the devil comes and starts bringing disputes, religious disputes, division. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and listen to this. You can be excited about the things of God. Let's say today you're excited about the things of God in the church. And by the time you go home, you want to tell your family, oh, we learned about Paul laid hands and they all began to speak in tongues. And all of a sudden you've got some that's a disputer. Well, that doesn't mean that. And by the time you know you're spending your whole evening disputing, disputing and trying to trying to de uh, define the word of God. And you just can't define it because you just don't know much. So you're trying to hang in there. And by the time you realize, you realize, well, yeah, that's true. Pastor is kind of different from others. And so, yeah, the Bible. Yeah, that's true. What happens? Spiritual transference of ungodliness starts coming in. But notice the, notice the results here. I want you to think about this. The result. What was the result? Peter separated his disciples. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it takes a departure for elevation. Sometimes it takes a separation so that you can be high, de highly developed in the things of God. Sometimes God removes things from you. I know this is, that's the hardest thing to understand, but I'm going to tell you, sometimes God removes friends from your life so that you can elevate in the things of God. And sometimes you try to force your friendships on people. You try to make it, you try, and you realize it's not working. I'm spending too much energy trying to get my friends back. I sure miss my friends. I want to spend my Friday nights with my friends. And you realize God is doing something here. He's, what, what really he's trying to do here, listen to this. He's trying to elevate you. So isolation is important for us. Can you say amen? So this is what happened here. He separated them. There was an isolation. He moved them apart. He says, uh-uh, you can't hang around with these people. You got to separate yourself. And all of a sudden they separated, but the Bible says that the body of Christ continued growing and growing and growing. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe God is separating you so that he can elevate you to perform what he wants to do in other people's lives. Maybe you've been spending too much time with the wrong people and the wrong people have been hindering you from moving forward. Come on, church. Can you say, hey, I, I've seen it over and over. I've seen people hang around wrong people. And it seems instead of them making the better person, it seems like somehow they become the worst person. I, 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 I've asked God that question. Why does that happen, God? And this is the answer is because we're living in a world that has darkness and the light of the gospel has not been strong in that person's life. In other words, it was not strong me to take it somewhere so that it can uh, uh, touch the darkness. It's not strong in you yet. You're not strong in that way. And to realize and write this down. This is powerful. Separation brings elevation. Separation brings elevation. Your elevation may require your isolation. And listen to this. I believe this is happening more and more in these days because God wants to isolate you so that he can elevate you to that that he has for you. Amen. You say amen. Hallelujah. I want you to hold your finger there. Uh, put a marker there. And let's go to the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book of Acts. Well, we are next, right? Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, Luke. Go to the book of Luke. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 14. Amen. Are you getting this, guys? Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 14. Look at Luke 14, verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me get my water here. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for our place of worship. Thank God for our beautiful place of worship with a nice air conditioning working real good. Amen. Listen to what it says. The 14th chapter, verse 1. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus is good. Amen. Can you say hallelujah? Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Acts, the 19th chapter. Let's go back to Acts, the 19th chapter, where we were. Now look at verse 10, verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years. In other words, they were separated. They were teaching the word of God. And it was about two, two years so that all... They which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Right? Now notice this. Notice this. In verse 11, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought 
unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them notice sickness people were healed and also they were delivered by evil spirits now notice this after the teaching of the word of God after the teaching of the word of God came miraculous signs and wonders now notice this during the isolation time during the 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 process to be elevated God is speaking to you and these words that he's speaking to you now are preparing you to bring mighty revelation to other people not only revelation but breakthrough miracles can you say amen Bobby could you give me a handkerchief please uh, uh, revelation is coming revelation is coming to people hallelujah amen in other words when they heard the word of the lord listen when they heard the word of the lord they were elevated in the power of god to bring miracles now notice this miracles were taking place hallelujah amen let me have this miracles were taking place so we find something here that when we allow god to teach us the word listen to this i want you to write this down you're now being caught in his presence now you're being caught. You're being caught in His presence. Now remember this. In order, for, in order for you to continue in the teaching part, you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to catch you in these areas. And notice this. Uh, I can teach you, but I can teach you best when things ha have been caught in my life. I can teach you best. I can teach you faith because I operate in faith. I can teach you how to believe God for finances because I believe God for finances all the days of my life. You see what I'm saying? And so we can, we can see that the, the movement of God, first of all, can't be taught. It has to be caught. In other words, Brother Bo, I, I can't teach you until first you catch it. Once you catch it, then the teaching of God comes through in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, if I'm giving you nothing but head knowledge and head knowledge and head knowledge, but it's not in your heart, you're not going to avail much. You're not going to do much. Hallelujah. Amen. So we realize that it has to be caught so that we can teach it and it has to be lay, laid hold of. Let me ask you a question. All of you this morning, think about the promises that you have of God. Have we operated with the blessings of God? Have we operated with the promises of God? I want you to think about that for a moment. There are sufficient promises in the Word of God to keep you alive every second of the day. I think about that. That's powerful. There is sufficient promises in the Word of God to keep you alive every minute of the day. Every minute of the day. Now, I want you to think about it. Every minute of the day, have we confessed His Word? Have we allowed the Word of God to come into our thought pattern and for us to speak it? Now think about it. If we forget to use the Word of God during the day that tells us of our spiritual growth, it's not big. You're not big. In other words, to have growth in you, you've got to use that Word. And the more that you use that Word, the more you're able to receive that spiritual uh, capability to hear from God even more. Hallelujah. Amen. You think about it. I believe the time that Christine and I minister to people, uh, and, and you know, we're pastors, we minister to people, we minister to you, we minister to people on one-on-one -on -one sometimes, and not much because we believe the Word of God here in the church does more. Uh, pastors ask me, do you have much counseling sessions? No, we don't because we believe the Word is sufficient to change people's lives. Now, there's times that we do meet with people, but I notice something. I notice something. The answer has always been in that individual's heart. It's always been there. The job that we had was to remind them of that word. They know the word, right? You know the word. We know the word. Our job is to remind them of that word so they themselves can build themselves up by that word of God. And then they get revelation and they say, oh, yeah, yeah, that, praise God. Thank you, pastors, for helping me. Well, we did nothing. We just reminded them of the word that had power in them. Amen. Uh, there was years ago there was a couple that came and they were having issues in their family they they didn't know how to raise their teenage sons and and they were having such a big problem with teenagers and, and you know the world says teenagers is a fun time right i had teenagers and and it is fun but you know with the word if you give them the word while they're young the teenage rebellious here won't be a much effective much much effective if you're not giving them the word expect some serious rebellious times
Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice this. This couple was in our office. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden the Spirit of the Lord came up to me. And I says, how much more time do you have? And for you that know me, uh, I may sound a little tough, but that's just the way I am. How much more time do you have? And her husband just like, like a freight train hit him. Uh, 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 well, honey, uh, uh, he blamed her. And she looked at him and said, and I can see the, 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 the mask coming up, a, a big mask coming. And she says, well, we're in the word a lot. And I said, listen, if you're in the word a lot, then you have enough revelation how to deal with your son. So let's close this time together and go on home, right? And I thought that was strange. And I said, man, Christine looked at me, thought maybe I might have been rude or something. And I thought, well, I don't know. That's just the Holy Ghost had me do that. And they went home, got in the Word, got in the Word, got in the Word, got in the Word, started getting their son in the Word, started seeing. They, they brought their son to church. He didn't want to come to church. He'd be sitting mad. And they brought him to church, brought him to church Sunday morning, brought him to church Sunday night, uh, Sunday night, brought him to church Wednesday, brought him to church Tuesday, brought him to early morning prayer. And you could tell he was fighting them, but they were in that Word. They were in that Word. It wasn't until there was a breakthrough in that son that he became a drummer in the church, a worshiper in the church, and today loves the Lord Jesus Christ with all his heart, right? See, what happened? The capacity to hear the Word of God. They grew in the Word of God. So we have to understand something. Uh, we, have to, we have to catch this in our life. If you want success in your life, catch the Word so that it can be taught in you and lay hold of these promises every day. Hallelujah. Amen? Now I want you to see something. Go with me to First, first Peter... First Peter, hallelujah, thank you Jesus for First Peter, hallelujah, amen. Jesus is good, say with me all the time, hallelujah, amen. First Peter, the fifth chapter, verses six, listen to what it says, verses six. Humble yourself, verse five, uh, verses six, chapter five. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Say with me, he cares for me. Hallelujah. Now notice this. You will only defeat the devil when you've got a foundation of God's word and you act upon that word. Now, in this particular scripture, it says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That word humbleness, you have to realize you're going to have to just lay it down before the Lord. Say, Father, I've tried raising my children this way, and it's not working. Or, Lord, uh, my husband and I are having problems. Or, my wife and I are having problems. Or, my job, Father. You just have to humble yourself before the Lord. See, you can't fix it on your own. <laughs> Amen. You can't fix it on your own. Amen. We've tried fixing our marriage and, and it couldn't be fixed on our own. But it had to be God that comes in and we captured the word of God. We humbled ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Listen, humble yourselves and cast all your cares upon him for he cares. Go ahead and talk to him. Tell him, Father, I'm just, uh, 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 whatever it is, you need to tell the Lord whatever the problem that you have. Cast yourself. Humble yourself. Now, humbling uh, also carries another, uh, another uh, form of, of attitude is you have to just, just lay it down. Sometimes, uh, you know, when, when Jennifer says, let's raise our hands to worship the Lord, uh, you know, the first thing that we think about, I don't feel like raising my hands. Do you know something? That's a form of pride. Now, notice this. Notice this. If we can't lift our hands simply to honor the Lord and our pride gets in the way, that's not humbling ourselves. Humbling is this. In fact, have you ever seen the first time people that raise their hands? They just they go like this, right? I remember a guy uh, that we were ministering to. I said, raise your hand. He was like, I, I, that was a person first time raising his hands. But you know what? He humbled himself. Or they humbled themselves before the Lord, right? And when they humbled themselves before the Lord, they recognize, they recognize what God is doing. They recognize, hallelujah. Can you say amen? They recognize what God is doing. And they start raising their hands, hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to James, the fourth chapter. Praise God. James, the fourth chapter. Look at your name and say, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. Hallelujah. Amen. And see, uh, you know, sometimes we just have to do that. The Lord will tell you, I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit. And you say, I don't feel like praying in the Holy Spirit. Well, see, see, this is the part of pride that has to come out. Maybe God is dealing with that. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, A, B, C, everybody. A, B, C. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's the simplest thing to say, right? You honored me by saying A, B, C, one, two, three. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I want you to say, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. 
What are you doing? You're honoring the Lord, and he's happy about that, right? We humble ourselves before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember a couple years ago, years ago, I said, Pastor, we just don't like it every time you tell us to pray in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit comes on us when we want to. I said, where did you get that stuff? Where did you get that stuff? And they, they thought the Holy Spirit. And so whenever I would say pray in the Holy Spirit, man, they'd put up a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see them in church just put up a wall and, and, but they, they, they worship with us for many years you know and all of a sudden they realized that wait a minute this is the way we're supposed to by faith releasing our tongues into the Lord and singing in the Holy Ghost not when he wants it. you know if we only did when we felt he can we would never do or he would never do what he can I want you to think about that if we always said well I'm only going to do it when God wants me to do it. You might have had a rough day today. Maybe you, you just don't want God to do anything in your life, right? And this is what we have to see. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Go with me to James. Are you there? James, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. James, the fourth chapter, verse 7. Listen to what it says. Submit yourselves. Submit yourselves. Say with me. Submit yourselves. Therefore to God. Oh, listen, submit yourselves to God. Come on, church, submit yourselves to God. Listen to what it says. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. That word resist says you stand in awe of God. And listen to this. When you're standing in awe of God, what are you doing? You're resisting the devil because you're standing in awe of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist the devil. Uh, you have to say, I resist you in Jesus' name. Whenever there's situations, you say, I resist you in Jesus' name. Pastor Christine, in my early years, she taught me, whenever you have pain, speak to that pain. Say, I resist you pain in the name of Jesus. Amen. I resist you in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you what, when you resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee. Amen. See, you'll only defeat the devil when you've got a foundation of God's word. And when you act upon it. Uh, and, and listen to this. It's up to you to resist the devil. Do you know something? I can pray for you, but it's not going to work on my behalf or your behalf if I'm only praying for you and you're not resisting. See, I can pray for you that you resist the devil, but if you're not never resisting the devil, then the devil will never flee. I'm just wasting time. I remember, uh, you know, there was a, a, young, a young girl that was living with someone and she wanted us to uh, counsel her about living together. And I told them, I said, you know what? Number one, you need to get married. And I thought she was going to throw a rock at me. You need to get married. Because see, what is it? I'm laying the principle of the word of God. Get married and then see God work in you. You can never get the blessing if you're not married. You can never get the blessing if you're not living right to God. You see So we have to realize the blessing comes when we put the foundation of the word of God. Can you say amen? And many says, hallelujah. That was pretty serious, right? Now notice this. Your level of faith is directly related to the degree of God's word dwelling in you. Let me say it again. Your faith is directly related to the degree of God's word working in you. More word in you more degree of faith. Less word in you, low degree of faith. Let's look at Ephesians, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm giving you a lot of scripture so that you could just get a good foundation of it. Hallelujah. Amen. See, see, it, it, the word is powerful. If you give yourself time in the word, it's powerful. Just like we give ourselves time for education and study. If you give yourself time in the word, you'll see yourself rise high. In 2 Corinthians, the six, uh, excuse me, Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 6. Now notice this. I want you to see this. And hath, or he has, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Look at this again. And he hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Now, one more scripture to, to confirm that. Go with me to Colossians now. Few, a few books over. Colossians, the third chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Colossians, the third chapter, verse 1. In fact, I tied these two together. Colossians 3, 3, 1. I tie it with the one that we just read in Ephesians. Listen to what it says. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And then verse uh, 2 says, set your affection on the things above, not on the things of the earth. Affection means desires. Your, your, your process 
of desires, your dedication to God. All right. Now, let's put these scriptures together. Now, go back to Ephesians. Notice this. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Now, Colossians says that we are made to sit with him in heavenly places. Now, get a hold of this picture right now, this picture. Our thought process should not be of this earthly things, but of God. My affection now is of the things of God. So, in other words, if Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, now notice this, at the right hand of the Father gives us authority. Any king that invites his subjects to sit next to him, or especially on the right hand, has been given authority. And that's where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. He has been given authority. All authority has been given unto me. Go ye therefore and make disciples. So in other words, he has authority. I love that about Jesus. He's seated at the right hand of God. He has authority. Now, notice this. Now, we have been made to sit together with him. Come on, church. That puts us in a higher position now. I'm walking in that authority that he's given me. He's made us to sit together with him. Uh, set your affections high above. You're seated with him. So in other words, here on earth, I have been given authority. The authority that Jesus has given, given me. Now think about that authority. If you have that authority here on earth. I'm telling Elijah, if you will ever get revelation, and I know through the word you will, that you have power over all the power of the enemy here on earth. I'm telling you, Jim, if I can, if I can explain it to you um, this morning, I got a text from a friend of mine, Cliff. Uh, you know, Cliff, we've been staying in touch. And he's a great prayer warrior. He prays for us. One day I'm going to bring him here to teach you the word of God. A great man of God. Let me tell you something. Uh, I, I got to witness the power of, of, of the authority of a believer. Uh, many, many situations have happened to me that I got to see the power of the authority of a believer. But Cliff one day, and, and I'll tell this story over and over. Cliff one day was going home from work. He worked night shift and he saw a woman hitchhiking. So he knew there's no reason for a woman to be hitchhiking by himself. So he just pulls over. He should. He told me later that the Lord was speaking to him, but the Lord protected him. And so he pulled over. When he pulled over, three men just jumped in, just pushed him in and just jumped in. One had a big gun on his head. And uh, one went around and pushed him over. So here's, here's the driver. Here's, <laughs> here's Cliff. Here's another guy. Here's the girl. And there's another guy in the back of the truck, right? And so Cliff now has a big gun in his, uh, literally on his right here just a big gun and the guy says you are a dead man now cliff used the word of god cliff used the word of god you can't kill a living man and the man said oh yeah bam cliff told me this two years ago we uh, we had supper together and cliff says let me tell you something i told cliff tell me that story again man you just it just fills me with faith when you tell me he said pastor i want to tell you something when that gun went off I felt the pain like somebody hit me with a two by four in the head. And I remember I just saw the fire and, and I felt the pain. And then I broke the glass in the back. And, and uh, they, I remember them just throwing me on the side of the highway. Some pastor bar picked me up, took me to the hospital. And, and uh, you know, the pain, I thought the bullet was in there. But, but I was still living. Doctor took x-rays, couldn't find the bullet. Couldn't find the bullet. Right? And I'm in my office, my studies, and the next morning, Cliff comes in. He's got a big bandage. Just his head is like a mummy walking in. And I'm a little laughing, right? Because I said, Cliff, what are you doing? What's, what's? And he took off that thing. He had a big old black eye, this side, just all black and blue. And he said, I've been shot. I said, oh, my God, Cliff. He said, Pastor, I've been shot. So he sat down and told me the testimony. And then they found the truck. So I, I told, uh, you know, I, my brother's in the towing business, so uh, he Cliff called me and said, Pastor, would you like to go with me? We found a truck and we need to go pick it up. I said, I'm going with you. So I got in the car with him and we drove off. And the first thing that Cliff, when he found his truck, opened the door and said, Pastor, uh, you got a pocket knife? And I said, yeah, I got a pocket knife. He dug in that radio. There was a slug in that radio. Pulled that slug out. Still has that slug today. And we started praising God. See, Cliff could have had his head blown off. I'm not saying that, 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 that this was the form of protection. I'm saying God has ways to protect the righteous. 
The righteous, the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? The righteous, the righteous. Why? Because Cliff stood on the foundation of the word of God. He stood. And to this day, still standing on the foundation of the word of God. Amen. Every time I look at him, I said, Boy, look. I said, I said, Cliff, let me see your let me see your, your nose that's a little broken there. <laughs> amen. He, he's got a big old scar there, but but it's incredible. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So in other words, we're seated with him in heavenly places. We have authority here on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. We have authority here on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, see, we have to act upon that authority. Amen. Go back to Acts, the 19th chapter. Now, this is going to be quite interesting right here. This part. And I have to share this because this is so important. Now, notice this. And so, verse 12 says, So that, the, from, that from his body were brought the handkerchiefs and, and aprons and diseases departed, and many were healed, Right? But notice this. Then a certain of the va vagabond Jews. You got to study this. Then the certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcist, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. And the name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons and one of Sceva, a Jew. And, the, and the chief priests would did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, listen to this, the evil spirits answered and said this, answered and says, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom this evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Hallelujah. Amen. And this was known throughout all the Jews and Greeks, throughout the Throughout the dwelling of Ephesus, and fear fell on all of them, and the name of the Lord was magnified. All right, so you got you got seven guys here, seven guys, and one of them was the son of Sceva. Seven guys that saw the power of Paul. Now, this is what I'm going to tell you something. That's why it has to be revelation to you. You can't lean on the anointing of others. Come on, church. You can't lean on the anointing of others. You have to have revelation of the Word of God for yourself. So what did they do? They saw Paul doing this. <laughs> they thought, well, we can do it, so let's do it. So they went ahead and got this evil person that had a demon and, and tried to expel or exercise their authority over this person that was possessed. And the devil spoke out of this person. Who are you? I know Jesus. I know Peter. But who do you, who are you? Who are you? And the Bible says that they just ran the spirit, jumped on them, and they literally were naked in the streets. And the people saw this. And they saw, whoa, this is serious. Now, this is the question. This is the thing that I want to tell you. You cannot exercise authority anywhere in things unless you know your authority in the body of Christ. Come on, church. You cannot exercise authority anywhere unless you know your authority in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is Jesus Christ. Now let me prove it to you. The reason why this is so important, because look at Matthew 28. Go to Matthew 28 very quickly. We've got two more scriptures and we're going to pray. Matthew 28 says it very clearly. I, I love this scripture, Matthew 28. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Amen. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says. And Jesus came... And spake unto them, the disciples, and said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you even to the ends of the earth. That word, all power, he says, all authority has been given to me. Now I'm giving it to you. You go forth. But notice as he said, now you go forth and teach them. Teach them the word of God. Now, if he didn't say teach it, he would have said just do the work of God. No, he said, teach them. See, it takes revelation of the word of God to have a solid foundation to overcome the enemy. See, many times the enemy does not leave simply by you saying, well, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. Jesus' name, I rebuke you. A pastor said, I can say, Jesus' name, I rebuke you. And the enemy is just laughing at you, laughing at you, laughing at you, because there's no power of authority in you by not having revelation of the word of God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. See, we have to have revelation of the Word of God. So when, when we speak the Word of God, that Word has authority. And authority goes out of your lifestyle, out of your walk, and you destroy the works of the enemy. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. See, see sometimes we have to realize maybe that's the hindrance that I have in my walk. Maybe 
I'm not rooted in the Word of God. Maybe uh, there's no fruit in me in the Word of God. Maybe uh, things are not happening because maybe I don't have a reality of this Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get reality of this Word of God. Amen. Look at another scripture. Go with me to Mark. Hallelujah. And the last scripture. Amen. Jesus is so good. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to leave out of here strong, like you've been to a powerful health club in Jesus' name. Amen. The health club of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Strong as the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark the 16th chapter. Amen. Praise God. Our people lift weights. You know, when you stop lifting weights and then you go back to lifting weights, you're sore, right? You can hardly lift up what you used to lift up a month ago, right? That happens to me. I try to lift up weights every day, and there's a couple of days I pass up, and then when I go back, it's like, oh, Jesus, i got to get these muscles back in obedience, right? Same way it is with the Word. you got to keep that Word going. Don't back off. Don't back off. And stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark, the 16th chapter, verse 15. And he said unto them, Jesus said, and he said unto them, Jesus said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. That word damned means uh, they have lost the chance of the word of life at that very moment, right? And these signs shall follow them that believe in my names. They shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. And notice this, this is where the world somehow just tries to destroy the scripture. Listen to this. Speak with new tongues and cast out devils. That means casting out devils has to have authority. You have to have authority. I'm telling you, you have to have authority. And the authority is being under the power of the Holy Spirit. I encourage you, get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Pray every day in tongues so that when you confront situations like this, you're able to overcome them like that. Amen. Hallelujah. You're able to overcome them in Jesus' name. Amen. I can tell you many examples of, 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 of things that I've seen. I'll, I'll tell you one that, that I'll never forget. I went to preach had a church, Pastor Christine knows this church, and, and, uh, and uh, people, you know, I, I, when, when we would preach, uh, I pastor here, I don't preach much like I used to, but we used to travel a lot, preach in different places, and I remember one time I was invited to this, this little church, beautiful little church, and, and the church, I sat in the front row, and, and we're worshiping the Lord, and, and all of a sudden, this woman walks in, Christine, you probably remember this, this woman walks in, and she sits on this side, and I kid you not, I kid you not, she sits on this side, and the whole church got up and walked on this side. <laughs> it's like the church went, <laughs> you know. And so they invited me to preach, so I get up to preach, right? And I'm noticing the woman, like Christine, sitting by herself, and everybody's over here. And instead, everybody, I'm the, I'm the guest, right? So everybody said, yeah. They're all looking at this woman like, and I said, hello, everybody. <laughs> They're all looking at this woman, so I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm just preaching. Well, I got the Word of God, right? And I started preaching the Word of God, you know. I, I didn't know this woman, and I get the Word of God. It it it's just like the Lord. The Lord had me walk to her, right? And I said, let's open our Word of God. And all of a sudden, this woman, I kid you not, I thought there was a dog in her purse. <laughs> I said, whoa. I said, what in the world was that? Hey, man. And I, I, I thought she had a little dog or a dog in there. And then I said, let's get in the word Jesus. And I recognized. I said, oh, dear Lord, this woman's possessed. And I said, let's, let's just worship Jesus. And everybody's like, <laughs> they knew this woman. I didn't know this woman. They knew her. Right? And all of a sudden, I get the word of God. And by this time, I already know she's possessed. And then the woman just flips her head and all her hair comes this way. So I'm looking at her face with nothing but hair, right? And I'm just speaking the word of God, speaking the word. And I'm getting closer and she's growling. And I'm saying the word of God. And, and she starts. And all of a sudden, I'm telling you, I just laid hands and said, devil, loosen her right now. And she found the power of God. And I kept preaching. I just kept preaching. She's, she's laying there and I'm just keep preaching, keep preaching. And I realized something. These people got a lesson of the power of the Holy Ghost working through me at that very moment because I asked the pastor after church, I said, Pastor, now, do you know this woman? He said, oh, yeah, he's, he's sister so-and-so. Uh, how long has she been coming to church? About 20-something years. 20-something years. How long has she been possessed? As long as we know her. I said, so what happens when she comes? Everybody just does what they did this morning. They leave her alone. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you. Now, now I'm going to tell you something. What if I would didn't have the word of God in me? 
And I was just faking it. And I got over there. Woo, that woman would have torn that devil. Would have, I would have been going, ah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I learned something in the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no fear, just the word of God come out. Amen. What is it? It's the word of God working in you. That produces power. Hallelujah. You get the foundation of the word of God. See, more, more spiritual capacity, more, more spiritual capacity is to get into that revelation of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially in these days that we're living. We're living in some serious days, folks. It's no longer, a, you know, playtime for the body of Christ. It's serious. God will send you places to disrupt the enemy's direction. God can send you to a Walmart and you don't even shop at Walmart. You can go and you're going to go get a watermelon at Crest maybe and you want to go to Walmart and you have the authority of God. Maybe you're the one that stops the strongholds of the enemy destroying people in that Walmart. See, we don't know that, but I know one thing. The anointing of God knows this and he walks, he uses soldiers throughout the city. Soldiers that know the word of God that are serious, that when they wake up in the morning, devils say, uh-uh, let's don't mess with this guy today or this woman today. Let's get out of here. Let's go, guys. Let's leave North Oklahoma City because this guy just woke up. Let's leave. Let's go to the south side. And they say, well, we can't go to the south side. There's something in the south side that knows God. Oh, let's go to the east. We can't go to the east. Well, let's just leave Oklahoma and go back to L.A. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm talking about, church? So we have to believe God in that. Amen.